Someone can't always be right, can they? Most of us would probably answer that answer with a no, a confident no. And there would be very few people, indeed, who might disagree with that. So if this is the case, then why does the term papal infallibility <laughs> give so many people such heartburn? It causes consternation both inside the church and outside the church. Why is this? I think it's because most people don't fully understand this important doctrine of the Catholic Church. We tend to think of it literally. And so we say, the Pope is infallible. He can't make mistakes. Now think about that. Would you say that a man who runs around Italy with an austere personal budget, dressed nothing in white, eating pasta with marinara sauce, is not prone to mistakes? <laughs> <laughs> Think of his cleaning bill. I'd like to strengthen your knowledge just a little bit about papal infallibility, really at the most basic level, by touching on the tips of two topics what it is, and what it is not. I'm going to avoid, as best I can, the theology underpinning papal infallibility, because that's probably more appropriate to a graduate level thesis discussion. And for me, anyways, probably somewhat of a snoozer. And I also promise, again, as best I can, not to get into a death spiral with a never-ending succession of Latin phrases. <laughs> So first, what is papal infallibility? Well, perhaps more than anything, is that it's rare. It has only been invoked twice since 1854, other than for declaration of the canonization of saints. And both of those instances regarded the dogma of Mary. So when the Pope declares a teaching infallible, there are five conditions which must exist. And I don't mean because I said it's uh, <laughs> so. Number one, he's got to be Pope, which of course eliminates Benedict, and there was some question about that, because he's no longer Pope. Francis is the one and only Pope. Two, he has to speak ex cathedra, which means in his official capacity as the Roman pontiff and pastor and teacher to all Christians. Three, He's going to speak on faith or morals. In other words, what Catholics must believe, faith, or must do, morals, to achieve eternal salvation. Four, he's going to define the dogma as being firmly and immutably held. In other words, this is it. There's no more questions, no more discussion. This is our faith forever. And five, he's going to say it must be accepted by the whole church. Now, there's no question to anyone when a teaching is declared infallible, because the language that announces that teaching will unambiguously incorporate those five conditions within its text. So really, papal infallibility is about the affirmation to the universal church about the truths of the teaching of the Catholic faith. It's not about the Pope always being right. So second, like I just said, it's not always about the Pope being right. But now that we understand a little bit more about what it is, let's talk a little bit more about what it's not. And really, this is probably where most of the confusion comes in. Now, from our last review, we now know that most of what popes do and say is not infallible. They're not protected from error. They're not protected from sin. Like all of us, the pope suffers from the human condition. I mean, all we have to do is go back and look at the colorful history of the papacy. And we have all the evidence we need of the all too human fallible fallibility of our popes. 
In fact, the Catholic faithful can disagree with the Pope on a whole range of issues. And when he does make a mistake, as members of the faithful, it's our obligation to challenge and correct him. So the doctrine of papal infallibility is most understood, misunderstood, primarily because of the popular ideas of what people think it is, more so than what it actually is. So I hope this afternoon, based on our little conversation, you have a little better understanding of what papal infallibility is and is not. And the next time you become engaged in such a great discussion, <laughs> you'll be able to weigh in with more confidence. Of course, I could be mistaken. <laughs> <laughs>